Okay, so we just watched the video that you guys are about to watch and Chad wanted to give you guys a little disclaimer. So we just watched it and we saw that I, I had talked a lot in this video. The reason that is is because it was like my journey to getting her to finally date me and get out of the friend zone. And there was a lot of things that she didn't know or a lot of things that I was experiencing while she was just, as you'll hear, frolicking with God's peace. And I was on the other side of the spectrum where my, my journey to like, roping her in to date me. So. <laughs> you just gotta love him, gotta love him. Enjoy. Number 438, we're back in action. We're back from Mexico. We're back from San Francisco. And you know what? We got another video. So welcome to Tours to channel. channel. See, we're so in sync. We're, we're so in sync that our recollections <laughs> of how we got out of the friend zone are also really in sync. <laughs> <laughs> so we left you guys off with why Chad got friend zoned in the first place. And so now we're gonna tell you the success story of how he got out of the friend zone. What was that? Ring, 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 ring. Oh, is this the friend zone calling? No, I already got out of you, sorry. Sorry, it was just a telemarketer. Uh, okay. So, okay, so after I got friend zoned, we stayed very close, not like, not, actually no, I scratched that. Blah, blah, blah. Scratch that, blah, blah, blah. We did not stay very close. We stayed close though. We, I, I've always had a lot of respect for her. I know she had a lot of respect for me, but we lived our own lives. We, we, um, we dated other people. We both lived in London at the same time, which is really funny. It was, God like, was like, hello. Hello. Her, it's her, you know, her, he, date her. And I was like, mm, God, she already said no. So I don't know what you want me to do. A few years went by and we were just kind of like uh, distant friends. The random check-in. A random check-in, hope you're doing well, all that stuff. And then, and then we got out of our other relationships. And then there was a time whenever I was in Tampa, Florida uh, for my best friend's wedding. And Tori was also in Tampa, Florida because she was working there at the time. And I was like, hey, why don't we meet up for coffee? And I, you know, just like the first time, remember in, in Miami? Remember yep. that front porch cafe yep. Yep. video one? How we met, dog. Oh, I um, wow. so I got a little aggressive there. Wow. I just finished a four-hour drive. I had I remember my brother's like big sweatshirt on, no makeup, hat, dirty tennis shoes, just like not looking cute. And so when Chad asked, he was like, "Well, I'll just come pick you up from the rental car place, so you don't have to Uber home, and we'll just grab a quick cup of gel." That's the coffee shop we went to. <laughs> so he comes and he picks me up and opens the door and he moves some books and I opened the door for you? Yeah. Silvery, am I right? I actually still remember when you walked through the door because this rental car place was at a hotel so I was sitting in the lobby and he walks in like so suave in his linen top and I don't even know but with his tell sunglasses them more. Tell on. Them more. Tell them more. I was just like, oh I am not dressed for this occasion. You're good looking, babe. Baby, I just put spit all over my face and it feels so gross right now. <laughs> so she was not feeling very confident, but again, we were just friends. And so what's there to be worried about, right? <laughs> it wasn't that I wasn't confident. I was just like, oh shoot. You weren't feeling your best self. You know what I mean? Yeah, I did Yeah. Thank you. So she saw the books that I had sitting there because your boy's a reader, hence the Read Cycle shirt. There it is. Ooh, she pinched the butt. It's super sore. And so she moved some books around and she saw one of the books I had, which was 31 Prayers for My Future Wife. And she started laughing and I'm like, <laughs> what's so funny about that? And then she pulls out a book out of her purse, which was 31 Prayers for, for Her Future Husband. Which was you, baby. Which would be me. At the time, we didn't know it was gonna be It was me. just awkward. It was very funny. We just looked at each other and laughed. Cause I mean, at this point, we're such good friends that we were like, what are the chances? We would be doing yeah. this. We both like, you know, we love the Lord. I mean, like, and, and so we, if there's gonna be two people that are gonna carry books like that around, it's gonna be us, yeah. right? Yeah, mom and dad. Mom and dad. No, we're not parents, we don't have parents, <laughs> but it's fine. So then we went to the coffee shop and we hung out. Then we started talking a lot more. I'm, I went back to Manhattan. I was living in New York City at the time. And we, I started trying to talk to her again and she was answering the calls and, and it was good. But I came to this like, uh, this fork in the road in life where, I didn't know who I wanted to be or what I wanted to do. I was going to counseling. 
it was just, I, I was a mess. It was a definitely a quarter life crisis. And then it hit me that maybe I'm supposed to go to graduate school. And then we were talking about it and she was a big, big fan of me doing this. And I was like, well, why don't you meet me uh, 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 in, Charlotte. in Charlotte, North Carolina and visit some of the schools there. And then we'll like take a trip to Asheville, North Carolina and it'll be a lot of fun. Bad idea. Bad idea. <laughs> You know, if if you are um, a believer in Christ, it's, we don't really encourage you to travel unless you're married. It can create some really difficult circumstances. It can create love ties that maybe you're not ready to deal with, especially if you're not gonna move forward with the person. And we weren't even kissing. I remember there was really something that Tori said to me. I, I wanna take future trips with my husband. I can't be taking trips with someone who's not gonna be that. I can't be making memories for life with somebody who's not gonna be my husband. And that really impacted me. Yeah, and so I, I remember coming back from the trip and I I don't like to move forward if I don't have peace about something and something was just off in my spirit. So I remember texting him and saying like, hey, I need a week to just think and pray on this. And I found myself in Song of Songs over and over and over again that week where it says, love is a friendship set ablaze and don't awaken love until it's ready. And I was like, okay, God, I get it. We He's should apply that in life. Ready. We should apply that in life though. Like like physically, like you shouldn't awaken me until I'm ready. Babe, you always wake up before me. I'm an early bird. And so she said, let's take a work. Uh, wow. <laughs> let's take a work. Let's take a week and let's yeah. pray about this. She said, every time you think of me, pray about the situation. And I'm like, I prayed 8,328 times that, that week. <laughs> I think one of my favorite things about Tori is how good of friends we are. There was times, even though we weren't dating and things were awkward, I just wanted to call her. And that's not normal for me. And so I wanted to spend time oh, with her. Oh, that's so sweet. I, I really, I thought you were gonna kiss me on the cheek. Oh, baby. And so after that week, she calls me and tell him, babe, rip the band-aid off. Just rip it off. I said, I think rip we it should off. just be Rip friends. it off. She friend zoned me for the second time. Y'all? He wasn't ready! He wasn't ready! He just didn't realize it. Oh man, that, that yeah. one hurt worse because I, I remember her saying something along the lines of like, you know, I care too much about you and I can, I can just be your friend. And I'm like, hold on, hold on, let's not jump to conclusions here. No, and she was right, I wasn't ready. She was right, I wasn't ready. I had to take, man, it ended up being, probably between four and eight months where I finally like, I let go of what I needed to let go of and I healed the way I needed to heal. You moved to California. I moved to California for graduate school. And, and I was like, guess it wasn't supposed to work out. Yeah. Boys in California. Yeah, and I had some friends check my heart and some stuff. That's very John Christ. Like, you need to check, check your heart, yourself. you know. <laughs> but I had a friend of mine say to me like, hey man, I think you have an idol of marriage and I don't think you'll ever be happy in a relationship until you're okay being alone. So I worked on that and then uh, then I started to call her. Then I was like, oh, your boy's ready. She didn't answer the phone multiple times. <laughs> or when she would answer the phone, guess what? She was busy. This is your future husband calling, trying to get a ring. Uh, what's going on? I'm not bitter. I'm not bitter at all. I was like, I she wonder why. She made me work. <laughs> I was like, why is Chad calling me so much? <laughs> oh, I wonder why, huh? Like, a guy who's tried to date you twice. This is how good God is because <laughs> When we had that conversation those months prior and I let it go, God really gave me peace over the situation. What? Baby. What? Just he keep did. going. He did. Mm -hmm. He did. I'm sure he did, babe. I mean, you know, I was in a pool of tears and you're over there frolicking with God's peace. <laughs> Not bitter. It was weird though because in those months, I still have it in my journal. I think I'm going to marry this guy. I think <laughs> That's like I weird to marry say. You. And I friend zoned him after I thought I was gonna marry him. So that's like just weird to look back on. But that's how God works. And he's like, my timing that's confidence is the right best there. timing. Yeah, that's confidence right there. I didn't have the confidence. I wasn't, I wouldn't have had the guts to pull the plug, you know? I know how important obedience is. And if I'm walking forward, if I get a definite answer from God and I feel like I'm deliberately disobeying him, then it's never gonna work out in my favor anyway. So I might as well just 
obey. Yeah, you're very smart. <laughs> am I right? Everyone else who's watching this, am I right? <laughs> She's an anomaly. Us other people get real with it. Ouch. So your boy is also smart. And so I texted her, called her, I can't remember, and I said, hey, I have to go to a wedding in your neck of the woods. You know, would you be interested in going with me? And and she was like, oh yeah, sure. But then I'm like, oh sure, whatever. I remember if my friend Liv is watching this video, she's probably rolling over laughing in her chair. He's like, so you're gonna go as his what? His, uh, his what, Tori? And I'm like, well, just, like his friend. And she's like, you're his wedding what? I'm like, date? Date. <laughs> and I was like, but it's super black and white. Like, we're just friends. Like, it's no big deal. And then two days before the wedding, he lets me know that the wedding is in Miami. Which, if you don't know Florida very well, Miami is about four to four and a half hours south of where I kind of inferred the wedding was going to be. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And then add on top of that, his family is having a vacation. Mm -hmm. Then it's like, well, how about I pick you up on Friday and you come fishing and spend the night like with my family on vacation. Don't worry, you'll have your own room. Like it's totally casual. Blah, 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 Crushed blah, 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 it. blah, blah. I remember being at the wedding with him and people asking how long we've been together, how long we're dating. I'm like, oh no, we're not dating, we're just friends. And then he was like, oh, we're exploring it. You know, I'm just setting the record straight. I'm like, you know? we're exploring what exactly? Baby, we're just exploring life, am I right? Mm. I just, here, let me just put something in perspective for you real quick. Do I need to remind you of something? Like, like, do I need to remind y'all of something? <laughs> like, your boy knew what he was doing. I need to stop doing that. <laughs> Why do I keep that? doing that? It's like my inner biological predisposition is like, beat your chest, man, beat your chest. And I'm like, why do I do that? I don't know. So that was the wedding that took him out of the friend zone, pretty much. Yeah, and I remember having this moment after the wedding. My mom was actually in town. I was getting ready for a women's conference and Chad was getting ready to go. I don't even know if you'll remember this, but I remember this moment so vividly. I'm sitting on the bed typing an email to a this. client. My mom is steaming his shirt like while she's in the bathroom doing his makeup and doing my makeup? Doing her makeup. Ain't doing this makeup. <laughs> doing her makeup and it was just so normal like it just made sense and it just felt right and I was like what is happening say something babe hello yeah this is really fun <laughs> like and subscribe <laughs> yeah and so from that moment on it game over. yeah it was like it, I wouldn't say it was game over it was still long distance you know and mm -hmm. I mean that's uh that's a five hour flight, yeah, three hour time difference, and we're gonna try to start dating long distance. That's pretty scary. So I would travel back to Florida as much as I could uh, to see her and spend time with her and to kind of go on those like preliminary dates before we make it a fish. Not, a, not like an actual fish, but like official. She didn't ask me though. Hmm. He just started calling me his girlfriend. Yo, I got a funny story for you that I'm actually, we're gonna share in another video about the time whenever she looked at me and she wanted to kiss me so bad. I'm gonna tell you that story, and I said no. I said no, but that's gonna be in a different video. It's very exciting. You know what video I'm talking about? So annoying. Yeah. Yes, I do. And so, I can't wait to share you whenever she was like, and I was like, no, no. My lips weren't puckered. Um, uh, oh, sure, you sure about that? <laughs> and so, I get to kiss. You I was back in LA, yeah. and we started talking, and I was flying back to Florida quite a bit, and I remember being back in Florida in December, that year, we're at dinner, we're, we're having a great time, we're sitting in like a round booth and we're sitting next to each other, which is super comfortable, it's a lot of fun, and I was sharing a story about some friends in Los Angeles and I shared that, oh yeah, like my girlfriend this, and she looked at me and she was like, you call me your girlfriend now? You call me your, and I, I was like, oh goodness gracious. <laughs> Cause we hadn't had the conversation like to make it official, I had to kind of like recoup mm -hmm. and basically explain why I called her my girlfriend and kind of, I guess, formally ask or just kind of say yes this is happening because <laughs> i learned that i'm not going to give her an option anymore you know i'm tired of giving this girl options you're like you're my girlfriend yeah third time's the charm yeah force her into being with me timing is everything yeah 
So that's how I got out of the friend zone. It's a it's a long story, so sorry for the long video. We hope that you guys enjoyed it. Our, our next video will probably be on... Let us know. We can do a video on dating long distance, what that looks like, when I decided to move to California. Yeah, what that conversation was like. So thanks for being a part of this whole thing that we're trying to do. We're excited to share a lot of the real parts of our relationship and our life and and especially the stuff that God's doing. Mm -hmm. We hope it encourages you guys, but also makes you laugh a bit too. If there's anything else that you guys wanna know, feel free to ask. Um, we love you guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for watching, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Ain't no drama. Ain't no drama. Ain't no drama. Ain't no drama. Babe, can you go get chapstick? Babies. Every time. <sighs> and it's so cold. Do it, Joe, she has to stand up.